Hi there, this is Mo Volans back for Tuts Plus, and I'm pretty sure this is the first batch of videos I've done for Tuts Plus this year. So Happy New Year, everyone. Uh, I know I'm a little bit late as it's the 26th, um, but this is just the timetable that I've got this month, and I'm pretty sure that all of these videos should come out at about, about the same time or reasonably close to each other. And that's good because a couple of them are actually quite closely related. This one is going to be concentrating on using external hardware processors in your door. Uh, I'm also going to do another one on using external synthesizers in your door. So similar subjects, but different techniques. Let's take a look at using external processors. And by that, I mean compressors, EQs, guitar effects pedals, effects units, reverb units, anything you've got in your rack, anything you've got lying around can now be integrated right in your mix without loads of complex routing. And this can be done in Logic, which we're going to be in, Logic Pro 10. Um, I know that's a pretty popular door. Don't worry too much because you can also do it in Ableton, Pro Tools, Cubase, and you can even record external synths uh, in Reason now uh, as part of the rack. Now they've got a standalone device. So let's get into it and let's just look at sort of what you could do. I've got a pretty empty uh, project here and I'm just going to create an audio track. Let's go ahead and do that. And then I'm going to choose a, a loop. Um, let's just go to loops here. Okay, that's fine. And we'll import the tempo as well. Great. I'm going to turn it down a little bit so we're not getting any clipping. And right now that's just dry. Let's just close the library down. And there's zero processing on it. You can see I'll just close the inspector down. There's no com no compression, no nothing. Even on the master out, it's completely clean. So if you were going to insert a plugin, obviously you could go ahead and insert some compression. Uh, let's go with a Fairchild or something. Pick the biggest one that wouldn't fit in, <laughs> wouldn't fit in the interface. But that's simple to apply some compression, and that's great. That's the good thing about sort of software compression, isn't it? You know, it's just it's there. It's nice and easy to insert. But it is just as easy to get some hardware in. So how do we go about that? So you're going to go to Utility, and then you're going to go to I/O. Now, as soon as you launch this I/O plugin as standard as default, it's going to you're going to get silence. That's because what it actually does is it throws the audio out of a chosen output and then brings it back into a chosen input. It's got a couple of other tricks up its sleeve, which we'll get into in a second, but that's essentially what it does. It creates a loop or an insert chain. And to do this, you're obviously going to have to have two things. You're going to have to have uh, an interface that accepts or supports several outputs apart from your monitor outputs. So you're going to need at least four outs, I guess. You're going to need two for your monitors if that's the way that you run your monitors, and two to throw out into whatever you choose to use for your processor. In this case, I've got a Universal Audio Apollo, so there's plenty of inputs and outputs here. You can see there's ADATs and all sorts. But you need to know, if you're running this sort of setup, you need to know which inputs and outputs the devices are on. And in this case, I know that the compressor that I'm going to just about to uh, use is on five and six. And you want to use the names in brackets, not the names to the left, because this is these are Logic's names, and these are your... Uh, interfaces names, so they're the ones to take note of. And then input 5 and 6 as well, line 5 and 6. Now, as soon as you do that, you start to hear audio again. That's because we're now going through a Drama 1968 Mark II valve compressor. Um, here it is with an Alicia unit below it. On here's the Universal Audio and ADAT setup to the left of it. So these are the, uh, the settings that are just come as default and this is 0 dB out and 0 dB in. So if you need to tweak the output level, and you'll know, by the way, by looking at your interface's control panel, what sort of level's coming into the unit. Note here, I've got it all muted. That's because if I unmute it, I'm not going to do that, but you'll hear it twice. You'll hear it coming into the interface and into Logic. But this is a good place to check that it's not clipping. But if you need to adjust it, you can do here, or obviously on the hardware. But, you know, if you've got a nice level and everything, it can be adjusted here. And as well, a good thing to do is hit this ping button. You can hear that click. It's basically sending a click out to the hardware through those designated outputs back in 
and then it measures the delay. Now, if there's any delay, it compensates by adding an offset in samples, you know, either a minus offset or a plus offset to make sure that everything's in time. In this case, system's running nicely. There's no latency that the system can pick up. I think once you start to add more, uh, or different devices at least, you'll see some latency. Now, once you've got this set up, you can then go ahead and save it. You can save as. You can see I've got a couple of things saved in there, and that's because I've got a couple of processes. So what I can do is just select 1968 Mark II, and it's already set up. All the ping and everything and levels that I use as a default are saved. It's just the same as what we just created, but you get the idea. To show you this working, uh, I'll show you another I.O. We'll go to Alicia EQ, and there's the Alicia setup. Now, the Alicia needs a plus one samples of latency offset, and that was saved with this. But I always check it anyway, just to make sure that everything's running perfectly. But now, we've, if we bring the interface control panel back in, you can see that we've got returns coming back in at five and six, and seven and eight. And that's because we've got, now got EQ and compression running. And these can be switched off, just like any other plugin. So there's our original. And there's our hardware. And they can be switched around. They can be moved around just like any other plugin. You have to give it a couple of seconds to catch up. Well, not a couple of seconds, but just a little while, because I think if you move them around, it has to hear a little glitch. But nothing out of the ordinary it really does work like a software plugin. And then if you want to combine software sort of filtering or something, or more compression or reverb, it just compensates and it works out the latency. And it's really tight, to be honest with you. It's just the only thing is it's a shame you can't label them because they all say I.O. on them. So if you've got five bits of hardware, at a glance, you're not going to know. So you'd have to open them. I strongly suggest you save a preset because then at least you can see the name of it here just by opening them. I mean, I've only got two bits, so it's you know not too difficult. But if you've got a rack full of stuff, you might want to start uh, naming them in there. It's just a real shame they don't allow you to name it. Anyway, there you go. That's how you do it. That's how you um, incorporate everything. And by the way, if you need to get this back in to Logic somehow, you could route this out to a bus. So let's do that instead of the stereo out. Let's go to bus one. And then we would uh, use this audio channel to go with bus one as an input there you go bus one and then i can record arm it i can i'll mute it in fact so you don't hear it but i think that might be software monitoring it but you get the idea that that's now recorded with the hardware on it you can then disengage the hardware use this audio as your you know your, your master version switch the the hardware off or use it for something else um, I like to use the compressor or the EQ on several different things, and I think that unless you've got loads of automation going on, this is a great way to lock it down onto parts and essentially bounce it uh, into place. And then maybe keep the original and the and the treated as well. So there you go. That's a, a really simple way of getting hardware into your door, or at least logic. Uh, but like I say, it's very very similar on uh, in, in other applications. And I'm going to show you next, in the next video or another video, I'm going to show you how to do a similar thing, uh, but with synthesizers.